going to show you how to do, I've heard it called many, many things. There's a new thing out with people um, using register tape to paper piece. So I'm going to show you that. It'll be fun. So I've got my uh, quilter select. This is the four and a half inch ruler and the little small mat with the rubbery cutter. And so what I've been making are these little scrappy blocks. So normally all of this stuff gets stuffed inside of a dog bed, but you know, some poor dog's gonna go unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, there's plenty of scraps to go around. So basically, I've heard this called crumb quilting, crazy quilting, string quilting. Um, but the, the thing that I saw most recently was um, using, this is from a paper from adding machine, using um, paper like this to piece your strips of fabric and scraps together. So I'm going to show you that first, a little bit of it. I've already got some already made, but it's super easy to do. And I've got my scissors here. So I'm going to take a piece, just kind of flatten it out, and I'm going to put it face up, and another piece right there on the edge. We could make it kind of curved a little bit too, and we're going to go right up under the machine, put my paper up close to it, and this doesn't have to be straight or you have to sew a straight line, but you can see it just does that, and then you set it back down, fold it over, give it a good press, grab your next scrap, place on top of it. Keep going. So the only thing I'm really focusing on is sewing a straight line. The rest of it doesn't matter. So if it's a quarter inch or you've got stuff sticking out behind it, doesn't really make a difference. So let's find another piece here. That's a lot of pieces. It is a lot of pieces, but it turns out really, really cute when you make a, a block out of it. I'll set it up there so you can see a little bit better. There's another one. And so you don't really one. know special color or nothing, just grab something off the pile? and Grab something off the pile. And so that's the paper piecing method. So then you've got this really kind of thin line right there. It's kind of cool. You do want to keep a trash can nearby. So I'm going to pull these off now because I've got enough here. And so then once you have a base unit, you can start adding on to it. And so this is another piece that I sewed a little bit earlier today see it's just stripes and stuff so I'm not even gonna try and square that up maybe a little let's square it up a little bit so I can have kind of a guide what's the paper for so it's to keep it stable while you're um, sewing so I'm gonna sew this right across there. I'm gonna put this other, under. So otherwise the pieces would kind of fly around? Or? They would, and I'm actually gonna sew from the wrong side because I want to um, make a really long run all the way and my strips are pressed this direction.
So I'm going to trim this off a little bit here. And like I said, this does not have to be perfect. Not even close. So basically you're making a foundation. And then I'm just going to press it all this way. And then when you've got a big enough piece, you come over to your cutting mat and put your ruler on and you can kind of turn your ruler really any kind of way that you think it makes it interesting. So I kind of like, I like that right there. We did order a big... You do have to put some effort when you cut it because you're cutting through multiple, multiple layers here. But the Quilter Select rulers really help because, you know, it when you put it down, there, yeah. you stay there. And so that's the block that we got out of that. So what do you think of this method? So what's, so this has been called crumb piecing. Crumb piecing. Crumb quilts. Crumb I've quilts. heard it called string piecing. I've heard it called crazy quilting, all kinds of different things. But these pieces that you cut off, you don't throw those away. You, this is your next foundation piece. So you just add on to this and add on to this. And so, you know, maybe these tiny little pieces I'll toss, but I've got this cool little piece right here. So do you only need the paper then just to start your first few pieces? Yes. Okay. So once you get your pieces started, so I'm gonna actually, go from this one that I just trimmed up and you can find oh this is cute just a little piece of fabric and I've got a little bit of an open seam right here so I'm gonna try and cover that up do you have an iron recommendation um settings anything I just turn it on and it's on um, cotton. So. And so to keep from adding too much bulk behind, I am going to trim this away a little bit. And then just press that. And so you can just kind of have fun with it. And just there, it's it's completely random. However, you want to place your. I wouldn't put pink next to pink, but you know, if you've got a little piece of fabric that's kind of interesting. So like these checks are kind of interesting to me. Well, that's a salvage. So I don't want to use that. The green is pretty, so you can kind of try it out. How does it look there? Looks good. I bet. And just show, sew it on. Definitely viewers would probably have enough scraps. Yep. And these are scraps left over from um, demoing AccuQuilt here. Um, you can see this is from that strip quilt that we did a little while ago. And you can use pieces this small. You can do it. So a viewer asked, would you add sashing to this then as well? I think so. I think that this would really be offset really nice um, with black. If you framed each of these in black, I wouldn't do a very big sashing. Um, but with all of these multiple layers, if you tried to piece these, you might get into a little bit of trouble. If you just sew a sashing on in between, maybe an inch sashing. So someone asked, could you use the finger doohickey thing for the pressing part? Or you need an iron? You, you could use the finger press. I like using the iron because I want to make sure that when I'm... <laughs> he said iron. <laughs> <laughs> I have an iron. <laughs> so 
from Robert. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like using the iron because <laughs> I'm having too much fun with that. It makes makes sure my block is laying flat so that when I'm sewing my straight line, if it's not quite straight, I can kind of work and press that to where it does. Because, I mean, it is still a quilt block. You still do want it to lay kind of flat. Uh, spritz of um, that acorn pressing would go great too. Um, not on the paper though, that would not work well. So then I've got this piece here I made earlier. I could just sew that like right across there. But so that's kind of how that works. I know. Well, I think we got some excited viewers that are looking to try it. Some have already done it. Yeah. Um, because they come out different every time. Every block comes out so drastically different. And I've been, this is, this is it. This is what I've been pulling from. And you can see, we need a better backdrop. You can see how differently the blocks look. So this one I started, I just did the tape, the paper tape. And I was just sewing little strips, but I mean that little shock of orange is pretty cool and you know it looks like you really put some effort into this and really you're just kind of having fun and that's what this is all about what size stitches did you use I am using a 2.4 millimeter you could make it smaller if you make it too small with the paper you'll it'll cut the paper as soon as you start sewing so normally with piecing we use a 1.8 millimeter so a little bit bigger you could probably go two and a quarter maybe but what do you think who's tried it who's going to try it can't wait to see are you gonna like make a small quilt with it yeah, then and just see how little, it comes together something small a little wall hanging you don't make anything small well i'm trying <laughs> I made that. That was small. <laughs> Smallish. So, but yeah, I, I've so, seen people do this. It's fun. And it's something to do besides. Would you, do you have a block size recommendation? Keep them small or? I would keep them small. They do kind of, because there's all kinds of bias on this. So like this is stretchy right here. If you keep the block small and use a sashing, you're not gonna run into too much trouble that, that way. Another good border to put around it would be like a piano key border. That would be great. You could just cut strips on your Aki quilt cutter and sew those together and just repeat that. So that would be fun too. Okay. So, yeah. Super cool. Something new for you to try. Yeah, and this is just adding machine tape. It's paper tape. I tried the receipt tape, but that works off of heat, so it turns black as soon as you touch it with the iron. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, truly paper, and they're super inexpensive. I think you can buy a whole case of this for like five dollars. So I don't know if they make it any wider though. Wider would be better I think but Beverly said only happy mistakes with this method. Only happy mistakes. <laughs> yeah and you know I love dogs but you know. I think there's plenty of scraps to go around. <laughs> there are pretty there are plenty of scraps to go around. And so plenty of people that don't want to try this out, but I encourage you to try it. So, I mean, you're not going to get much out of this scrap other than, you know, a nest for a dog or something really cool. Yeah. 